Hi, my name is Susie Carter and I currently work for Food Co-op Initiative. Uh, I'm, my only regret is that I can't be with you today uh, sharing with you and talking about participation in co-ops. Um, I went and talked to, to my community. I talked to other startup organizers and other folks that work with startups to ask them how they saw participation as a driving force um, in startups. And almost every person's response was, it's everything. Um, it's, the, it's the air, it's, it, it's huge. Participation is, is everything that we do. And participation really is at the core for startups. Um, but what I wanted to do was try and tease that out a little bit and figure out um, you know, what is it about participation that startups do really well. Um, and I want to believe, and I do believe, that it has a lot to do with stories. It has a lot to do with storytelling. And I think that startups do this so well. And I think that we have something to learn from them. Um, so for myself, when I look back on the story and the stories that I heard along the way, um, I actually found my own. I knew that there were people that believed what I believed and that together we were going to create the change that we wanted to see in our community. Um, so the three things that I want to touch on uh, that I think are really important to storytelling is the public narrative, um, relational interacting, and the idea of the tribe. So um, just to, to kind of flesh out the storytelling a little bit, there's a tool that a lot of startup co-ops use to, to both find their own story and to also teach other uh, members of their community how to tell the story of the co-op, and that's through the public narrative. And so the public narrative comes from New Organizing Institute um, and the work of Marshall Gantz. And it, it, it incorporates the story of self, the story of us, and the story of now. And so just as the story of self might imply, um, this is the story of why we're called to serve. Um, what connects you? What is it about your past, your family, the way that you ate, um, the way that you grew up? Uh, why are you involved in doing the work that you're doing with your co-op now? And I think that's always the first place that we need to start. Uh, the story of us is the story of the shared values and experience um, of a community and really articulates the capacity that a community or an organization has to meet the needs um, that exist uh, within, within our community or the world. And then the story of now. The story of now is really the call to action. Um, so uh, any, any story uh, is just sort of a moral, but when we have a real call to action, we're really making it happen together. So that story of self, us, and now really pulls together the challenge and the choice that we have as individuals to create the change that we want to see. Um, and I think that with, with all of these stories for startups, it really just starts with that first conversation. Uh, which leads me to the next idea around relational um, interacting. And, and so it's really relational versus transactional. I think once we have the store up and running, um, it's, it's very easy to, to, to become more of a transactional sort of experience. But for startups and, and how they get folks to participate is that they really, really focus on the relationship. They really focus on the resources that are available in the community. And I think the other really important thing as, as I talk with startups um, and organizers is that there's a real desire to move away from the status quo. That to build this co-op, it's, it's really moving beyond business as usual. Um, this is really building trust and commitment. And when we have the trust and commitment in a relational way with people, people show us their commitment in the form of a membership share or signing up to run our Facebook, or updating the website, or joining the site selection committee, all of the thousand ways that uh, members of the community and members of our co-op um, increase their participation over time. Okay, and, and so the third idea I have is the idea of the tribe, which might sound stronger than I mean it, um, but I think startups, especially the ones um, that are really early organizing, have to really clearly focus on why they do what they do, not necessarily what they do yet, because the store isn't open. So they're really building the, the idea of what they believe in, their values, and they're really calling people to come and participate in this change that they're creating together. And so I do think that's the idea of the tribe, and I think that um, people are also joining this sort of co-op tribe um, because of their own self-interest. I think the story of self, us, and now really helps individuals to see um, 
this is, this is why I'm interested. This is the change that I want to see in my community. And I'm going to join together with these other people. Um, so in my conversations with other folks that work with startups, I came across a, a really cool drawing that I think um, articulates uh, a lot of why participation is really exploding in startups and, and is really um, grow, going much more beyond uh, economic participation. And, it, and so it was the idea of the co-op as the big circle and the store as the little circle. Um, so that we understand that the idea of the, the big circle co-op is to grow the vision, grow the impact, share it, articulate it, um, show people how fun it is and it's going to be, and invite them to come and participate. There's really hundreds of ways that people are participating beyond just their member investment. Um, and then the store itself, of course we still need our members to participate in the creation of the store. And there's always members from that bigger circle, if done really well, that do participate in the creation of the operations of the store um, through hiring of the general manager, uh, building out the business plan and the pro, pro forma. While that is work and not the sexy work of building the co-op, um, it is work that people, I think, clearly understand as having impact in the community. And I think that's because startup organizers really clearly articulate that story. They really allow people to see how the work that they're doing now is going to create that change in their community, in their food system down the road. Uh, with those ideas out there, um, I encourage you to think about what's your story? Why are you doing this work? What is the change that you want to see in your community? And then think about your co-op story. Where is your co-op now? What do you want your story to be?